Howdy, I'm Professor Curtis of Aspire Mountain Academy, here with more statistics homework help. Today, we're going to learn how to perform the Wilcoxon Signs Rank Test for median volumes. Here's our problem statement. The amounts in ounces in cans of soda are given below. The cans are labeled to indicate that the contents are 12 ounces of soda. Use a 0.01 significance level to test the claim that the cans are filled so that the median amount is 12 ounces. If the median is not 12 ounces, are consumers being cheated? Okay, the first part of this problem is asking for the null and alternative hypotheses. The null hypothesis is going to be that there's no difference from the standard that's been established. So the median is going to equal 12 ounces. This is the claim that's being made. And we can see that right up here, that this is the claim that's being made. And so the alternative cannot be the claim. The alternative has to be the complement of the claim, which is that the mean amount is not equal to 12 ounces. Nice work! And now the next part of this problem is asking us to calculate our test statistic. This is big T. Yes, big T. So, let's take a look at our data. Here we have our data and Wow, with the quantity of data that we got, uh, I could tell you we're in for some heavy-duty calculation here. But let's just go ahead and mm, let's see here. We're going to open in Excel. We could try StatCrunch, but I could tell you right now that with the amount of data that we have, this is not going to work for us. And I know that because, I mean, look at how many data points we've got. One, two four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times four is 36. So you've got more than 30 data points here, which means, yeah, you're going to have to do some heavy duty calculating because we can get this and that's okay. But, you know, the test statistic we're really going to use is going to be a z-score, but we'll get to that in a moment. Right now, let's go ahead and open StatCrunch. And I'm not sure that this will work. Actually, I'm kind of thinking it's not going to work. Let's go ahead and look at this. If we go to stat, non-parametrics, Wilcoxon signed ranks. We have just the one variable. I don't know how this is supposed to compare with a standard. I mean, there's nowhere in here for us to put the standard, which is one of the reasons why I suspect this isn't going to work. But... This area under hypothesis test looks right. So let's go ahead. Uh-oh, 666. Six, six. <laughs> That's not going to bode well. <laughs> I already tell you, 666 six, six is not going to bode well. See, what did I tell you? <laughs> uh, so this means we're going to have to perform our calculations in Excel using the old school technique. So here I've got the data in Excel. Let's clean this up a little bit first. First thing I want to do is I want to center everything. I just have an easier time distinguishing between columns if everything's centered. And then let's put another row in here so we can actually label our columns. And we're going to make that bold typeface so that they stand out. So here's our actual values. Now what we need to compute is the actual difference D. And this is the difference from the standards being adopted. So I'm going to take this value here to the left and just subtract it from 12. Whoops. Suppressed one key too many. So now I'm going to take this formula, I'll go down to the bottom, copy it all along the side. So now I've got all of my rows. Uh, now I have a difference. And now I'm going to come up. The next thing I'm going to do is take the absolute value of those differences. And I'm going to do that with the absolute value function here in Excel. And I just want to take the absolute value of that number right there to the left. Again, I'm going to copy down. There we go. So now I've got all my values are now positive. And now I can actually rank everything. Or, yeah, I can rank everything. But first I've got to sort my list. Make sure it's in order, and wow, it actually looks like it's already in order. How do you figure that? Anywho, let's just make sure it's sorted. So I go to data, sort, 
And in the sort dialog, I want to click on that last column and go from smallest to largest. Ooh. Wasn't supposed to put my headers down. Ooh. I don't like you. I don't like you. Let's try this again, huh? Sort. Okay, now I've got everything sorted. The rows with zero difference are not going to carry through, so we're just going to zero them out there. And then we're going to start numbering 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. I can save myself a lot of typing if I just drag that down. So I'm just going to take that right bottom corner again and just drag it down all the way to the end. There we go. So now we got 33 for our value for n. And I'm going to come back up here to the top. So these are my rankings. Now I'm going to make an adjustment to those rankings. And the adjustment I'm going to make is that, first of all, these first three values are zeroed out. Notice how the actual absolute value here is the same for the first, oh, I don't know, 10 values. So I'm going to select the ranks for those first 10 values. And notice how here I get an average. This is the new rank for those 10 rows. So I got a 5.5. Now I got to do the same thing for all the other numbers that have tied out. So that's 16.5. And that's 25. And, and then last we have 30.5. OK. Now I've got all of my ranks adjusted. There's one more adjustment that I need to make, and that is the sign that was originally on the difference needs to come onto the adjusted rank. So where this is positive, this stays positive, but where this is negative, this needs to become negative. So to do that, I'm going to use the if function to perform a little test. And the test I'm going to say is I want to it, it tests to see if this difference is negative. So that's going to be less than zero. If it's less than zero, then it's negative. And if it's negative, then what I want to do is make zero minus this positive value going to be the value in that cell. That'll make it negative. If it's not negative, then it's positive, and I just want to take the value in the next cell over. So this is my function. I close it out, now I press Enter. And if I copy you for all the different rows I have, now I've got the correct values here that I need to use for my summation. Notice everywhere it's positive. It's positive here. And notice the values here that are negative. Now these values have become negative. So now down here at the bottom, I'm going to have two sums, a negative sum and a positive sum. The negative sum is going to be the sum of all of these ranking values here in this last column that are negative. But I want the sum to be positive. So I'm going to add up all the negative numbers and then take the absolute value. So here in Excel, we're going to do that first. Take the absolute value of the sum of all the negative numbers. Now I'm going to go through this list here as I scroll up. When I see a negative number, I'm going to hold down the control button on my keyboard as I select each of the cells that have a negative number in it. Notice how those cells are being added to my sum function. And that's all we've got. So I close out the parentheses again for the absolute value function. And there's my sum. I'm going to do the same thing for the positive values. Only here I don't need to take the absolute value because we're already positive. 
Now I could hit control and select each one of these individually or press the shift button on my keyboard, go to this one that's at the end of where I want that column to be and select it once and it moves the whole thing up. Now from this point I need to press the control key as I'm selecting individual cells. It looks like that's it. Okay, so it looks like our T value is 44. So instead of 666, now we've got 44. Well done. Now the next part says, since the sample size n is greater than 30, convert T to a Z test statistic. <laughs> See, I told you the Z score was coming. I could tell you from the size of the sample that this that the Z score was coming in. Let me tell you something. I want you to look at this. Check this out. Look at this behemoth of an equation. This thing's a monster. Oh my gosh. So back from our analysis in Excel, T is 44, N is 33. We had 36 original uh, values, but we had three of them that zeroed out. So they're not any longer included in the analysis. So now we've got T and N. We can go ahead and substitute these values into our equation. And if we simplify that, eventually we get to a point where we can punch numbers into a calculator and out comes our test statistic Z-score. I masked around to two decimal places. Good job. Now we're asked to determine the critical values. And for that, I'm going to go into StatCrunch. We'll pop that window out. And here in StatCrunch, I'm going to Stat, Calculators, Normal. I'm going to the normal calculator because the standard normal distribution is where we get critical values that correspond with Z test scores. So we're looking at a two-tailed distribution, I believe. Yep, two-tailed distribution. So I got to hit between up here at the top. And my significance level is 1%. So that means there's going to be 99% in between the tails. And there's my critical values. I like to select this plus or minus button so I don't have to type the number more than once. Good job. Now the next part asks us to choose the correct answer, which is going to be a conclusion for the actual hypothesis test. We've got a test statistic here, a z-score, and we've got a critical value here. So let's see where we're at. Negative 4.23 puts us, oh, right about here. So definitely in that left tail of the distribution, which means we're in the region of rejection. So we're gonna reject the null hypothesis. And every time we reject the null hypothesis, there is sufficient evidence. Well done. And now the last question asks, are consumers being cheated? Well, okay. <laughs> uh. Uh, well, from the basis of the hypothesis test, we rejected the null hypothesis. And remember the null hypothesis, if we scroll back up here, it says the median amount of soda is equal to 12. We rejected that. So that means accepting the alternative, which says that it's not equal to 12. So uh, are customers being cheated? Well, it depends on which, way, which side of the fence we're on. If the mean amount is less than 12, then yeah, customers are being cheated. But if it's more than 12, then yeah, probably not because they're actually getting more than what is actually listed there on the can. So let's go back to our Excel file. If I come down here, I can actually use the median function in Excel to go get my median value. And let's see where we actually set. Up 12.2. So we're getting a little bit more than what the can says is actually inside the can. So I wouldn't say customers are being cheated. If anything, they're getting a little bit of a freebie. So let's see what we got here. Answer option A says, since the median of the sample is 12.2, which it is, there's no reason to suspect that customers are being cheated. 
Bingo, that's what we're looking for. Well done. And that's how we do it at Aspire Mountain Academy. Be sure to leave your comments below. Let us know how good a job we did or how we can improve. And if your stats teacher is boring or just doesn't want to help you learn stats, go to AspireMountainAcademy.com where you can learn more about accessing our lecture videos or provide feedback on what you'd like to see. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.